looks like an Anami episode. Anami. <laughs> we just had one of these. Smells like an Anami episode. Not an Anami episode. I think it is an Anami. It's not episode. because Nanami is hardly in it, except for she's uh, the main thing. No, she's not. She has very short, interspersed scenes of elephant attacks, <laughs> and that's basically that's it. That's half the episode. She is the catalyst of what happens in this episode. But actually, she isn't even the catalyst because, as we learn in the end, the curry had nothing to do with it in the first place. <laughs> Even whether Nanami is the focus or not, I think she is the main in this episode, right? The point is, is that it is one of those humorous episodes that doesn't really follow the formula, doesn't really have a lot to do with the duels at very much, right? And therefore, we can call it a Nanami episode being a humorous aside, no. whether or not Nanami is now here's why I say the primary no, because or not. there are episodes that are asides, maybe humorous, but a Nanami episode has that progression of Nanami through the same things the lieutenant goes through, the adolescence allegory, all those pieces. This does not have any of the requisite pieces that make it a Nanami episode. If anything, it's a, just a non-dual episode of Rutena that has a big Nanami component. Actually, this comes, the, I've read not much of the manga, but the whole curry thing is in the manga. We're not talking about the manga when we talk about this show, yeah. except in the very end when we get toward the drowned boy. I think I do want to bring up the drowned boy and all the different Utenas. Because that's where the, in the anime... movie, the drowned boy is really a bigger... That's where the anime almost references things that don't exist in the anime in a big way. And they actually are kind of relevant. Yep. But just, So this is not, in my opinion, an Anami episode. It is just a calm before a storm <laughs> because... Notice how this episode begins with the fairy tale being retold. I think that was to kill time in the episode because the episode wouldn't have been long enough without it. And you can insert that at the beginning of any episode. Usually, however, the fairy tale is introduced right before, again, right before a serious sort of episode that calls back to that. The next episode after this one is that times a thousand. We'll have to see if the fairy tale is at the beginning of the next episode or not. I, the fairy tale might just be to kind of remind you what this show is. It's and like, what it's hey about. guys, if you just watch this episode without the fairy tale, you might think Utena is just all silliness because we just had a Minami episode like two episodes ago. Uh, remember, Utena is serious business. Okay, now the episode is comedy lols. So this episode, though. Did it really happen? We always say when the weird anime crap happens in Utena, pay attention. How and why did this actually happen? Why, if Anthe's this weird girl, is she so weird that her cooking literally can cause people to change bodies, cause explosions that the police and fire departments are actually involved in? <laughs> We heard sirens after the explosion. The whole school knew about it. So, how did this happen? And two, did Nanami really go to India? <laughs> well, think about this, right? Here, here's a, here's a, a, the first clue, right? Nana, Utena and, and Anthe switch bodies, right? Yup. Yet somehow, not only are their personalities and voices switched, but somehow Utena in Anthe's body is able to perform as well as sports. Right? So if she was actually switched to the physical body of Anthe, which we assume is more frail than Utena's body. Unless Anthe's up to things we don't know about. How is she able to do the sports as effectively, even though she still had the practice and motor reflexes? Yep. She didn't have the physical strength, you know, endurance ability because she was using Anthe's lungs and muscles. So what's up with that? Now, more to the point, Anthe was not bothered by this at all. <laughs> しかし元に戻る方法を考えなきゃな。心配ありませんわ。きっと今頃七海さんが。あ、まあ皆さん、そう落ち込まずに。<笑> 
私のスペシャルカレーでも召し上がって元気を出してください。Utena was only slightly bothered. <laughs> Now, Auntie being bothered, not, you know, it, being bothered by it or not, one could make an, a case that she is kind of weird and that she's, you know, maybe not even human. There's something up with her to the point that she might not care. She might literally have no care in the world as to what her physical body and appearance is. But she does not care to a point that would make a viewer trying to read into the show a little bit think that she actually knew what was happening and was. Possibly even the instigator. Ah, Sayonji Senpai no Koka Niki desu ne? Ja, Utena sama, Senpai ni Niki o watashi toite kudasai ne? Eh? Watashi toite te, Boku ni Niki o kake te yuno? Ima wa Utena sama ga Hinemi ya Anshi desu kara, Boku ga kimi tachi no privacy yo nozoku wake ni wa ikanai yo. Mazui yo so yuno. Mazui no desu ka? Mazui sa, so ya. In this. Remember, it was her curry. She could have done this on purpose. Right? Yep. So she was probably like, yes. I love that series of scenes where they're buying the, they're make, taking the pictures and selling them of this to people in the students. And Mickey buys some, and then Toga buys Toga some. Toga buys like a whole shipment of them. That's the best part. He buys the negatives. He's like, he's on top of it. So, and he seemed, you know, the, the student council is in crisis. So, they have an emergency meeting. What do we do about this? Even Toga is like, what do we do about this? Well, at that point, they thought they were injured. So he was worried that the duels wouldn't be able to continue on schedule because Utena would be like, sorry, can't show up to the, you know, dueling arena today. Can't climb the stairs. My leg hurts. But there would also be the existential crisis of what happens to the duels if the Rose Bride is now Utena. Yeah, what would happen if we can't follow the instructions of, uh... You know. And that seemed to be the worry. I mean, Toga thinks that the end of the world didn't even foresee this. So, who caused this? Just try to figure this out for yourselves, because who caused it? Why? Was it Anthe? If so, what was she after? To make Nanami go to India and get smashed by elephants? <laughs> Now, I don't think Nanami went to India. No. We saw her get on a plane and fly away with her friends. Yes, and then the plane immediately cut to a Shadow Girl thing, which was just karma. It was just the golden rule. Yep. Stuff you do might come back and bite you in the ass. Oh, you tried to poison someone's curry, even though they actually turned out to not actually poison the curry. Could this just be... Anthe or someone else attempting to punish Nanami for being a, you know, what, a, being a Nanami. Simultaneously, just have some fun with all these people. I mean, look at poor Sionji. The fact that everyone's kind of involved in this. Sionji and his poor exchange diary. That's your favorite part. The second to last time we see the exchange diary, the next time you see it, it is tragic. <laughs> remember, and in that tragic scene, when that tragic exchange diary appears again, just remember the two of those pages say dumbass, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Utena wrote it with a red marker. Poor Sionji, kind of a creeper, kind well, of sad. Well, even Utena says I'm starting to feel sad for Sionji. <laughs> Yep, he pops up out of the no out of nowhere, just like in the window, just like, hey guys, I'm Sionji. And then he turns into Choo Choo. Yeah. <laughs> There's not a lot else to say about this episode other than, once again, crazy crap happened. For real. How and why did it happen? I am convinced to this day, having seen the entire show multiple times, Nanami never went to India. 
Because those are African elephants. <laughs> You're taking a detail that was clearly caused by low budget and lack of research. All right, multiple and details trying... then. One, beyond, so beyond the fact that they're African elephants, they would have died. <laughs> yeah. When they were knocked off the mountain, they would have died in the ocean. None of those things could have happened or made sense in anything even approaching a real world. And yet, we've seen in Uteta that out in the real world, outside of the school, there's just normal people doing normal stuff. It's only in the school around these dual stuff is weird. Either Nanami, either India and Africa are also weird. So it's Otori Academy, India, Africa. And weirdness always involves animals. Yeah, so something's up with what happened in this episode. Okay. One other thing I want to point out, which is easy to miss, in this episode, Toga has a cell phone, which is a very modern cell phone for the time in which the episode was made. Yep. So he is high tech. He is hooked up. Yeah. He's wealthy. He's got money. He's got something. And the school has cell service. And the next time you see him talking on a phone is a big deal. <laughs> The time after that, you see him talking well, on... Well, he starts to use his old school on the wall phone, right? He calls different people with the two different phones, mm. as you'll notice later. He's got two numbers. It's important. But don't worry. After this episode, now that you've seen it, the rest of the episodes in this season are serious business. Not a lot of silliness left uh, in the remaining episodes here. <laughs>